about some of the basic building blocks of accounting. So accounting, or what you're going to learn in this class, is based on generally accepted accounting principles, which is also known as GAAP, G-A-A-P here. Generally accepted accounting principles. And those principles are dictated by making sure that the information we provide is relevant, it's reliable, and it's comparable. So we want to make sure that the information is going to affect the decision of the users, it's going to be trusted, and it's going to be helpful in comparing different organizations. So it could be from different industries or similar companies in the same industry. Now who sets GAAP are going to be the Financial Accounting Standards Board, which is FASB, and the Securities and Exchange Commission, which is the SEC. Now typically FASB is the only one who has established GAAP. The SEC has the right and authority to do so, but I don't believe they actually have set any of those standards. There's also a new party in town called the International Accounting Standards Board, which is the IASB, and they have been issuing international standards. So the whole idea is to have this convergence between our international accounting standards and our domestic accounting standards. And there has been some... Um, so movement in that we were going to converge and have one standard and that has kind of um, fizzled a little bit. I think there are a couple of standards that are still yet to be decided, but um, the ultimate goal is that we will have one standard. The good news is most of the information that I will teach you in this class will carry over even when we do adopt those international financial reporting standards which are called IFRS. So stay tuned on, on that. That may change here. In the near future. So a couple of the basic building blocks of accounting. Number one here is going to be the cost principle. So anything we buy for the company, any assets that we bring into the company, equipment, buildings, inventory, all going to be recorded at cost and that's what we actually paid for it. Not maybe what the market value is, what we should have paid, but what we actually paid for that. The reason is because it's reliable, it's objectively measured. This is one area where those international standards do vary a little bit. Then we have something called the reliability and objectivity principle. So here we want to make sure that our information is supported by evidence. So we have receipts, we have invoices, we have documentation to support whatever it is that we're recording. And the other item here is the business economic entity principle. So this is, says that we should keep our business life separate from our personal life. So we want to keep our business accounting separate from our personal. We don't want to commingle those. So if you open your own business, you want to make sure you have a separate checking account and um, separate credit card. You want to keep those business and your personal dealings completely uh, independent of each other. The last major concept or building block in accounting here is ethics, and this is to keep everything reliable that we talked about and trusted. And there have been some issues with uh, accounting here and not too long, not too long ago, and we'll talk about those here in just a second. So basic ethics, I'm sure you've all had an ethics class before. It's um, distinguishing right from wrong and what are the accepted standards of good behavior. So we want to make sure that we have that understandable, relevant, and reliable information and we're going to try not to hopefully manipulate that information and try to prevent fraud. And because of all the big accounting scandals that happened in the early 2000s, you may have heard of Enron or Tyco or WorldCom, um, the government got involved and created what is called the Sarbanes-Oxley Act of 2002. You can also may hear it called SOX or Sarbox. so Sarbanes-Oxley Act. And essentially what it did is it created a public accounting oversight board and they regulate how um, accountants go in and audit other companies. There's also some penalties. Um, CEOs and CFOs can face jail time and huge fines for lying on their financial statements. Um, there's some uh, the auditors who go in and audit a committee can only or audit a company can only serve that company for a certain period of time. Those audit companies um, can't do multiple services now for a company. So there's a lot of different rules involved with Sarbanes-Oxley, and we'll talk more about that in Chapter 5.
One last item I uh, forgot to mention earlier is the difference between cash accounting and accrual accounting. And um, cash accounting is not GAAP. And what it basically says is that we recognize our revenue when we receive cash and we recognize our expenses when we pay cash. And it sounds like a very simple, straightforward way to handle accounting. And a lot of smaller businesses do still use cash accounting. However, it's not GAAP and it's not very accurate and reliable. And accrual basis accounting is GAAP. So accrual basis accounting says we recognize our revenue when it's earned, meaning when we provide a service or deliver the merchandise and we recognize our expenses when they're actually incurred. Let me give you an example of the difference between cash and accrual accounting and why it's so important. So let's say here we own a painting company and we actually purchased paint, painted a building and paid our employees all in 2006. So basically we did all of the work for that in 2006. So under accrual basis accounting, we would recognize the revenue when we painted the building, which is $80,000. That's what we received for painting it. We recognize the expenses, the supplies, and paying our employees of fifty thousand in the same time period, um, which was would give us a net income of thirty thousand dollars. Revenues minus expenses gives us net income in two thousand and six. So on our income, our on our tax returns, we would recognize net income of thirty thousand dollars. Then in two thousand and seven, even though we didn't receive payment on that job in two thousand and six we would not record any revenue expenses or net income. So under accrual basis accounting, that revenue and expense recognition is independent of when we actually receive the cash. Now under cash basis accounting, we wouldn't recognize the revenue until we actually got paid. But we would have paid out all of those expenses in 2006, resulting in a net loss of $50,000 in 06. Wow, we'd be getting a big tax refund probably in 2006. But look at what happens in 2007. Also, anyone who was looking at our financial statements would say, wow, you guys are awful. You had a $50,000 loss in 2006. Then in 2007, we would have showed $80,000 worth of revenue with no associated expenses. Man, we would get hit on our taxes tremendously hard in 2007. Again, someone looking at our financial statements would say, wow, what kind of business are you operating? You had a $50,000 loss last year. Now you had an $80,000 in net income. It doesn't make a lot of sense. So we try to match our revenues in our, with our expenses. And again, we recognize the revenues when they're incurred or when they're earned. In this case, when we actually painted the building. And then those expenses when they're incurred, when we actually um, had to pay for them. Hope that clarifies things just a little bit for you. Thank you.